Hey everybody, uh, second take on this video. <laughs> My first attempt on this video, Delia decided to squeeze lotion all over herself in the middle of it. So, uh, here we go, again. <laughs> so, I wanted to do a little companion video for, uh, tips for beginning knitters that I wish I'd had. It will go with a blog post that, um, I'd made a while ago. So, like I said, I don't know, I learned how to knit in college, so it was very much like, uh, went and got cheap acrylic yarn and cheap, like, metal knit needles, and I'm a really loose knitter. <laughs> so the combination of, uh, cheap acrylic yarn and, uh, metal knitting needles was bad, because the yarn's so slippy, and then the metal knitting needles were also really slippy, <laughs> and I know some people are really tight knitters when they start out, and they can, like, barely get the needles in, and if that's you then uh, go get yourself some cheap acrylic yarn and um, some metal knitting needles. But if you're like me and like the first stuff I was knitting, like it just kept getting like bigger and bigger and looser and looser and it was like falling off the needles for me. Um, so I would definitely, if that is you, <laughs> go get some decent yarn and it doesn't have to be expensive. I actually really, hold on, I'm trying to dig it out of a bag one-handed here. I love, um, and this is a giant cone the size of my head. You don't have to buy it in a giant cone the size of your head. This is the uh, cream and sugar, the cotton. You can get it at like any random craft store. And I love it. It's cotton, and so it's a little bit grabbier than, um, like I said, the acrylic. And I just like it. It's cotton. You can make, like, uh, dishcloths, <laughs> washcloths, hot pads. You can make, like, just stuff all day on this. I, I really, it's cheap, and it's awesome. And it, like I said, it's not going to be as slippy. So if you're a loose knitter, I would recommend starting with this. Um, also, while I'm holding this, is a good example of get yourself something. This is a variegated yarn. So, I mean, it's all one big piece of yarn, but it changes color slowly and so if you're a beginning knitter you know you're not into like changing yarns yourself so it, i don't know it'd be less boring if you had something that was kind of self striping or variegated like this so that as you're knitting you know you end up with something cool that changes colors and it kind of looks like you knew what you were doing more than you actually did so uh variegated yarn <laughs> um also a wool like i would just say get a uh like a nice wool is good too. Merino wool is going to be the softest. I'm walking over here to grab this. This is a wool of the Andes and it's not merino, but I still totally think it's soft. So I don't know. I'm not as picky as some people are with a uh, fiber content, but um, wool or cotton is going to be grabbier and then wooden knitting needles will also help. Um, I love birch is my favorite, which is why that's what we have on the Crafty Housewife Yarns website are birch needles. So, uh, I'm sort of getting all my tips jumbled together. <laughs> so, anyhow, that was another thing in the blog was the website, Knit Picks. And, um, I know, like, you get into knitting and then it's so expensive, like it can be. Like, I know the local yarn shop, sorry, I was listening, I thought I heard, heard babies doing something. Okay, yes, <laughs> tip number two, or number three, I'm not sure which one we're on. The website, Knit Picks. It's a great website. They are out of, uh... Washington State, I believe, and they're sort of a mill direct, so their website says, but their prices are great. So I know you start knitting, and uh, you know, if you're going in, I started knitting in Charleston, South Carolina, so it was like super fancy yarn shop, which isn't there anymore, but their stuff was all super expensive, so that was very daunting to me. I wish I'd known about knit picks then. Um, like I said, this is Wool of the Andes. This little ball, I made a sweater out of a bunch of these, which is why I have it left over, was, um, I think like three dollars and some change so um you know definitely great prices great quality and it's an american company which i like uh their you know wool comes from all over the place but they have cotton they have silk i mean they really nitpicks go check it out so definitely a great place to you know if you're starting or if you're seasoned i still if i'm making a sweater or something big that i need like specific yarn for and i'm not using hand spun like that's that's where i get it or also, if you like using hand spun yarn or art yarn, or you have like a cool piece of something that was expensive and then you don't, you know, you want to use that as like an accent piece, like you can totally get some really nice yarn to go with it, which I've talked about in other blogs from Knit Picks. And so that way, you know, you don't feel bad about spending like 30 bucks on something fancy because then you're spending like $3 on the rest of it. So I don't know, that's the story of my whole life. <laughs> so, also, one of my other tips on that blog was the, uh, 
nitpick circular needle set and these are wood they're birch needles um, you can get them in different colors which like I said I love birch needles are my favorite so uh, they feel great in your hands here is one and you they've got these different lengths wires so you can really if you're doing a sweater or like anything longer I mean you have to have circular needles and the sit sets once again can be really expensive I feel like uh, in shops and the Knit Picks needle set is definitely, I mean, it's definitely affordable and they're really nice. I mean, they're, they're super nice needles. So those are definitely, I plan on using them forever. <laughs> so uh, if I'm not using straight needles, which I do still like the old school ones, I like double points a lot. But the uh, Knit Picks needle set, I think you can't beat for the money. Uh, if you're starting out. And then that way you have like all the different sizes. So if you're starting, you're not like, uh, I only have eight. You know, like you'll have all, I mean, not every size, but pretty much all the basic sizes you would need. So that's probably just a good investment. Um, another tip is blocking, especially if you're using hand spun yarn. <laughs> But blocking in general, you'll be, if it's something bigger or something that wants to roll, like a scarf, a lot of the first, like when you start out, you're just knitting a bunch of stockinette and stockinette wants to like roll <laughs> on the ends. I made a bunch of really rolly scarves when I started and blocking is when you wet it and then you stretch it out or lay it flat. Um, I have been known to wet many an item and then put it on my picnic table with like heavy pots <laughs> if it was a simple thing on either end to like let it dry stretched out. Basically that's what you're trying to do is you stretch it into the shape you want while it's wet and then let it dry that way. Um, I have recently picked up, and it was, I'm trying to bend over to get it, these uh, cool wires that I used for a sweater that was all made of hand spun yarn that looked like a hot mess before I blocked it out. <laughs> now it's really pretty, and it grew like a foot. Like, you'll be surprised. Like, if you have something that doesn't fit right, like, block it. Um, but yeah, you, I got it from Zeppelin Yarn Works, um, which you can find them on Instagram or Etsy, and they are a, uh, they're out of Washington, and they're a mother-daughter, like, hand-spun yarn stuff, too, and I believe they make these. So there are these cool wires, and then they've got these little pins that, you know, you can kind of put the wires through, like, your sweater, and then you pin, put, pin it down on, like, a rug or a mat or whatever with the pins, and then that holds it out, and that did a great job which I can't do this one-handed, I, here's my sweater, <laughs> just finished making the sweater, and it, as you see, has a lot of, uh, lace work on the, that's hard to do with one hand, uh, lace work on the bottom, and so this all looked like a super lumpy mess, and after I blocked it with the, uh, wires I just showed you, you see all the lace work like really opened up. I swear this thing grew like a foot and a half. Like it's a much, <laughs> it's a much nicer sweater now. So blocking is definitely a great tip. Um, something else that I was recommended to was Ravelry, which once again, I don't know how I didn't know about Ravelry, but uh, <laughs> girlfriend told me about it. It's like social media for knitters. I do find the program, like, I wish the website would update. Like, please update Ravelry. You're very archaic looking. So it's a little hard to use, I feel like, especially if you're used to something with an easier interface. But, like, their help boards are great. You can get in, like, knit-alongs. You can follow designers, and they do, like, test knitting. and knit it's, it's super fun. And there's patterns, most importantly. I think that's what most of us use Ravelry for the most is, um... You can put in, you know, if you have like a weird amount of yarn left, like what can I make that's 150 yards of worsted weight yarn? So you can like put in what you have and then it pulls up all these patterns and there's a bunch of free ones. Like you can buy them, but there's also just like tons of free ones. And so I love the search option of being able to be like, this is what I have, this is what I need. And then you can find everything on Ravelry and it's a great community and like people will help you. And uh, so yeah, you should go check out Ravelry. <laughs> Anyway, another tip for uh, beginning knitters is you should definitely join a local knitting group. I was really, like I said, I learned to knit in college. So I knit with my roommates. So I guess that was my first, <laughs> my first local knitting group. But um, when we moved, we moved from South Carolina to Washington State. Like really one of the best ways that I made friends, and I was super slow doing it, so I wish I'd done it sooner, was on Ravelry you can also look up uh, groups in your area. So you can find like local knitting groups and you just kind of have to go and be open-minded and you don't know, you know, like who all is going to be there. But I made some really good friends and we all did like sweater knitting together and I really miss them <laughs> now that I've moved to, to Knoxville. 
but um, definitely join some local knitting groups. It's so fun. You'll make friends. People can help you. Like I said, if you're, you know, new, you can have somebody you can go to and be like, what's happening with this? And then they can probably, uh, you know, help you either rip it back out and get you a glass of wine to cry into or uh, hopefully fix whatever stitch you've dropped or uh, whatever that way. So I hope those are some more helpful tips for, for knitting. I think, you know, knitting, crochet, like weaving, you know, I don't weave, I'll probably do that eventually. Anything like that, it's so good. It's good, it's a great craft, you can travel with it easy, you can take it everywhere, it's relaxing, you actually get cool things when you're done. And just don't get discouraged. I mean, everybody starts out, like I said, I made like a trapezoid. It was supposed to be a square the first thing I ever knit, and it just got bigger and weirder <laughs> as it went. So just, you know, you're gonna make like a bunch of funky stuff. So just keep making funky stuff and it'll eventually get uh, get less weird. So I'm gonna put this video, like I said, on that blog. And if you find it helpful, you know, that's great. I'm glad if you know somebody that's starting knitting, uh, like I said, I was just hoping, these were all things that like, as I started knitting, like I said, I met people and met Ravelry, you know, got on Ravelry and discovered knit picks um, through the knitting group. They're the ones that told me about that. Uh, you know, I was like, man, I wish I'd known about this like five years ago. <laughs> so anyhow, I hope that that's helpful. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. I am definitely not an expert knitter, but uh, you know, I've knit a few sweaters in my day, so have a good one.